Hi everyone, this is Chris from Feldgrau Productions, and what I have in front of me is one of every single sculpt from Pendragon 10mm Ancients Later Roman Lines. So let me tell you how I got my hands on literally one of every sculpt, just one, and how I'm going to be reviewing these for you, because I think there's a lack of reviewing of 10mm miniatures, and I have the opportunity to do it. So I was contacted by Leon from Pentraken to do some commissions for him. In the past, I've done commissions of his World War One uh, World War One line, uh, but I was ordering some 10 millimeter late Roman ancients, and we were talking, and we agreed that I would paint the late Romans. So these are the figures that I have paid for. I bought these. These are mine. I love them. I think they're great. They have a ton of detail, and especially, I'm going to show you. This is another Pentraken set. Uh, I'm currently in the process of rebasing them, so they they look a little. Plain. Uh, these are their Carthaginians, and you can see there's a ton of variety and detail in the Romans on the left, the late Romans versus the Carthaginians on the right. Uh, this particular, these are the uh, regular armored spearmen. We'll take another look at them. They have four different sculpts, and I've mixed in some figures from some uh, other sets uh, that they have. And then the Carthaginians, they really only have two sculpts for their spearmen. Spear held close to the body and spear held away from the body. So I like a lot of variety. If you don't, then th that's kind of personal preference. Uh, obviously, I've got command figures on either end from different codes, but I happen to think that some of these, um, some of these figures from Pendragon, really, really shine, and I'm very excited to show them the rest of you. Now, Leon is paying me to paint these, so just a disclaimer on that. But again, I want to review. I'm not being paid to do this review, and I have bought many of these figures with my own money and so i'm reviewing them based on not just what i have in front of you but my own experience painting them so up first we're going to be doing this by code the codes are a r l the later roman empire and one of the great things about these is this is code number one the unarmored foot with spear and the first thing we can immediately see is that there's five of these guys Right, these are your basic unarmored troops, and we've got five different sculpts with shields in different positions. You know, kind of casually standing there, ready to go to battle. Excuse me if I try to get the focus in. It's it's quite quite difficult with these ten millimeter figures sometimes. Even why, if you're wondering why they're on bottle caps, it's it's for painting. So we've got a lot of different variety, especially this guy. Look at his mustache. You can see hairs in his mustache and on his head. Um, and not just the shape of hair, but like kind of individual mustache hairs, and it's quite awesome. All I've done with these, by the way, is I clean them up, very little cleanup on them, glued them to the bases, and then uh, primed black and dry brushed them white, both for painting and for ease of seeing them on the camera. So that was code one, unarmored foot with spear. Now this is code two, armored foot with spear, and this is the only one where I do not have one of every single pose, because there's actually four poses with this, and one of them... Um, went missing unfortunately before it got to me and it's on the way, but I do have this and this guy right here on the front right He is the missing pose. He's kind of casually standing there with his hand on his shield So that's what's missing here. And again, look at the detail on these. I actually have some Republican Romans Also from Pendragon As you can see they are the same scale although the late Romans on the left are a little chunkier than the Republican Romans on the right but there's so much more detail in the face. You can actually make out a lot more of the facial features. They are a little beefier. The height, some of that is just the difference in basing. So I, I can't really say if they're a different size or not. Um, and whether you like these slightly skinnier guys or these slightly beefier guys, I like the beefier guys. You can really see the detail. There's, you can see the fingers on this guy. Whereas on them, eh, not so much. I mean, a little bit, but not nearly as much. So I think these are some of Pendragon's best. So that was code two, armored foot with spear. And the next code is the only one I'm a little bit confused at, and I like the sculpt. This is code three, heavy cavalry with spear and shield. The only thing is it's the it's only one sculpt in the code. Um, and what confuses me is there's another code, and this is the one we'll go out of order. This is code 13. This is um, the armored cavalry with spear and shield, whereas the guy on the left is the heavily armored cavalry with spear and shield. I don't really notice much of a difference, and I think they all look great together. So you could mix the three on the right with the one on the left, or just go with the three on the right, and that would be fine. You get a lot of uh, variability out of these different uh, armored and cavalry with their shields. I also love these ovular shields. I think they look great. I actually ordered some some um, 
shield transfers for 10 millimeter that I'm going to do another video on because they have not arrived yet. So I'm going to be experimenting with them. What we have here now is code number six. This is archers. Now, of course, they're in the late Roman set, but you could really use this as almost any uh, late ancients or early medieval dark ages archers. Some of them helmeted, some of them not helmeted, and they just it doesn't have a ton of detail on them, so you don't need to spend hours painting them, but you can really make out variety some sort of pouch, the, the quiver, of course. And some of them have hats, some of them are just hair, some of them the helmets, so lots of variety in these archers. So you can have a little more individuality, or if you want to be doing skirmish, 10 millimeter skirmish, which I am and I'm going to be making some more videos about, then these would be great. This is number five. These are the slingers, not quite as many as the archers. There's only four different sculpts, but still, I think a lot of life in these slingers, you know, posing, getting ready to go. This one's letting loose. This one's got a good action pose here. And then this guy kind of holding and maybe reloading his sling. After the slingers, we have more variety in the unarmored. These are the unarmored foot with mixed weapons. Just making sure I have them all. Yeah, there are seven of these, so a lot of different choice. So we've got a couple of different guys now with swords. This guy on the right, maybe a little bit of an awkward position, I will say, but if he's my least favorite, it, he, the rest come, are pretty strong. Um, more spear varieties, so you can mix these in with your other spearmen to get some more action poses, rather than just them kind of like standing statically holding their spears. <laughs> holding it down getting ready to throw his spear. Some of these are helmeted, some of these are unhelmeted. Very dramatic thrusting spear move. I like this guy's beard as well. And then one guy throwing, um, I'm not sure what the historical term would be, but some sort of dart there, some sort of weighted dart. Uh, you'll also notice on them, the only thing about these, and really with any tent uh, metal miniature, is the uh, mold lines. So the mold lines on these are relatively small, but sometimes they do run across the front of the shield. And I did try to go in and file them down. And it can be a little tough sometimes. It will m pretty much disappear once I actually go in and paint it. But that is, I think, one of the only minor, minor flaws in these figures is occasionally the mold line runs across the shield. But it is really such a minor thing that I can't even fault it. What we have next is code number seven, the armored foot with mixed weapons. So like the unarmored foot, we have a couple with swords here. And then a few with spears. I think this is one of my favorite sculpts, this guy. Just dramatically stabbing his spear forward or throwing it forward. I also like, some of them have the head, uh, have the helmet crests, and some of them don't. So you can mix them up a little bit to get uh, units with crests and maybe make them a little more elite, units without crests. You can see they have the scabbards for their swords that they're not holding. This, I believe it's a spatha at that time period. And then the straps across their armor, but still not overly detailed. And then another guy throwing that uh, dart protected by shield in there. Again, you can see that mold line that kind of runs because the way it was cast, like those two pieces. It's the only thing that really needs cleanup on these. Very minimal flash. Then we move on to number eight. This is the unarmored command, giving you a lot of variety. And you could even, if you're not using these as command, you can mix them as regular soldiers. So this guy's got a really dramatic pose, but this guy's a little more subdued. So you can mix him in with the regular unarmored swordsman if you want. Uh, we have obligatory dude pointing over there. Another dude with a sword holding on his hand, telling you to stop or go do something. And then we've got the musicians. I love this giant dramatic horn thing. His big swirling cloak that swirls around him. And then this guy holding out his sword dramatically. And these come with either, you have a little banner, and I'll show you an example of a banner in a second, or kind of the uh, the dragon standard thing that the Romans had in the later period. So really fantastic looking. That is the unarmored command. As you can probably guess, next up is the armored command. This might take the cake for the most sculpt types uh, with eight. So we have more dramatic swordsmen. This guy 
being my favorite with the crest, and it looks like you can tell he doesn't have mail on, he has some kind of scale, and then a really great cloak on him. In fact, I think this is a good point to bring out. You, I'm, you know, I do a lot of videos mostly on 3D printed figures, and this is a figure by Cromartie Forge. I forget if it's a Celt or a German, and you'll notice he's a little bigger because I scaled him up to 12 millimeter for skirmish, but the detail, aside from the, the, the detail on the 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 shield which would be very hard to achieve with old metal casting the detail they both have the same scale armor and it, it's hard to say which i like more it's just kind of different preferences the details on this are a little chunkier this one's a little less dramatic which actually can make the the more over the top detail easier to paint and then they both have their big flowing cloaks so Personal preference, I think these are both very good for different reasons, and I would use them both. The only, the, the main advantage of this is I could scale this up. Obviously, you can't rescale a physical miniature. So we've got all these swords, guys. I will admit this guy is a bit of an awkward pose, the way the sword is just kind of sticking off to the side. It's one of the few poses that I am not as big fan of. Two different musicians, uh, the big dramatic horn and the more understated horn standard bears you can see another dragon standard bear and then this is what the other kind of standard looks like so you can do you can do a little freehand on that if you want and then another commander who's just kind of holding his hand up and here's more of that awesome hand sculpted detail the little tassel on the helmet there and in fact i have one of these painted up here on the end and so you can see went with like a bronze helmet and then this turquoise tassel to really set it off so you can see it and really tell if you couldn't tell already he's the leader he's got the fancy helmet so he's got to be the leader now if you were looking for even more variety in the unarmored spearman department here we have code number 10 and these are just labeled militia and uh well none of these have helmets none of these even have fancy hats so i guess they're supposed to be even lower quality lower grade um, infantry, but they really give you just even more options that you can mix together these figures, or you can have them represent slightly different groups. These these guys, this guy's even balding, and you can see that he's balding. Like everything is on there, so that you can tell the beard on this figure to pretty good as well. And this isn't even it. We have more unarmored spearmen if you need even more variety. We have the obligatory casualties if you need them. These are the unarmored casualties with their helmets off to the side. And then we have some armored casualties. Not much more to say there. And then we move on to some of our first cavalry. Well, we already saw some cavalry. These are the unarmored cavalry. So you could use these as scouts. They all have spears. Helmet on this guy. And on, well, no, he's got a hat, not a helmet. So they're still mostly unarmored. And we already looked at code number 13. These were code number 12. Uh, 13 were the, ha uh, were the armored cavalry, which I showed you when we looked at number three. And then here we can look at number 14, the unarmored cavalry command. So we've got a musician. He's got a helmet, he's got a crest, so you know he's command, but he is unarmored. We've got this banner bearer. I really like this guy pointing. And in fact, if you wanted, you can even, without adding this on, you could turn this banner bearer into another spearman, and he could be pretty useful. And then we've got the leader dramatically pointing forward. Of this set, I think the the banner bearer. And again, remember, they all come with different options, dragon and banner. I've gone with the dragon because I think it's going to look more dramatic um, for the pictures that they'll uh, turn into. Then we can look at some of the armored choices. This is the armored command. Hornblower. And it's not just the same sculpt as the unarmored command. They are totally different sculpts leader, and banner bearer, which again, you could have probably turn that into a spear if you wanted to. 
for more spear variety. All right, so we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, these are the last of the unarmored dudes with spears. Specifically, this is code number 16, early Anglo-Saxon type militia. The only ones that are, well, not the only ones, but some of the only ones that are explicitly not late Roman. So as always, great detail on the beards, on the hair, on the clothing. Some of them look younger. Some of them look older. Some of them look balder. Uh, what sets these apart is obviously the uh, round shield instead of the oval shield. So you can tell that they're a little bit different, but even if you're not using them as Anglo-Saxons, you could use them as uh, federates, um, like Goths, uh, Vandals, etc., uh, any of the Germanic tribes. More command figures. This is code 17 generals on foot, although there are no generals on horse. Those are just the uh, regular uh, command figures that are available. We've got three unarmored. My favorite is Guy pointing off into the distance with big dramatic mustache. And then three armored gentlemen. Uh, this guy holding his helmet in his hand and with kind of those bronze curiouses. So you've got some variety there. And then what might be, I think, my absolute favorite code in the entire set. This is code 18, Arthurian personalities, the other non-explicitly Roman. So you've got kind of this Roman-esque looking guy here with a helmet and the shield, although these are my two favorite. These are absolutely Arthur and Merlin, and they're just perfect. And that Merlin could be a great Gandalf as well. You know, maybe his beard isn't quite long or luxurious enough to really pull off a Gandalf, but a, a great Boromir option here. Just really fantastic choices for skirmish or as great looking generals. All right, rounding this off with the last of the cavalry and that's it. So this is code number 19. These are horse archers. Uh, specifically unarmored horse archers. They do have these little tiny buckler shields. I'm not sure what the technical term for it would be. But they look pretty good. As before, still a lot of detail. This guy's got his bow holding down here. He's holding his bow down there. So different poses. And then we have a couple of different super heavily armored Roman cavalry. Uh, so we have the cataphracts with Contos, the long spear. So these are the heavily armored horses. Now, these are a little fiddly to put together because the upper torsos of the people are a different piece than the legs and the horse. And there is a little peg that goes into there and you do have to glue them together. So I will say a little fiddly to put together. Certainly not impossible, just can be a little annoying. I love this guy's face shield. I think it looks great. And you can mix up the different horses. Some of these horse sculpts are the same, and some of them are a little bit different. Actually, I think this is the only one that's different. And you're going to see some of these uh, horses, which on this side they have the um, scabbard. Some of these horses you're going to see appear again, and some of these bodies you're going to see appear again in the other super heavy cavalry. Now these, although they look like the cataphracts with Contos, which was code 20, these are code 21, which is the Clibinarii with Contos. So very similar, but instead of a scabbard, they have a bow in a kind of a, well, I mean a holster for lack of a better term. But it's the same upper torsos, just different horse with leg options. So uh, I'm not an expert in this time period, so I'm not sure exactly what the difference between the cataphracts and the Clibinarii are, but there you go. And then finally, these are the final code, number 22, Clibinarii with bow. There is a code 23, but that is just a, a combo army pack. So you've got very heavily armored with bow, but without that spear. So three different varieties in super heavy cavalry. So what's my rating on this? Strong recommendation. I do a lot of 3D printing on this channel, and these figures absolutely give my 3D prints a competitive run for their money. The only place where I think the 3D prints surpass them are details on the shields, but other than that, 
they look different. Some people might like the look of the 3D prints more. Some people might like the slight simplicity and over-exaggeration of the metal figures. That really comes down to personal preference. But I think that these figures look great solo for skirmish, although I wouldn't put them on a base quite that small. It's a little small. I put them on uh, 20 millimeter bases for these individual um, infantry. Or, of course, you can rank them up. This is a 40 by 20 base, 5 men across, and 2 deep, or a bigger bases if you want, 40 by 40, 50 by 25, something like that. They look fantastic, and I cannot recommend them enough. Although I did not spend my own money on these particular, it gave me the opportunity to show you every single one of these figures at the same time. And I have spent my money on these figures, and I have spent money on Pendragon. I will continue to. I'm going to have another video in the future with American Revolution 10 millimeter figures for Skirmish. And I'm also going to show off my Pendragon Gondorians when they are done. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this review has been useful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And thanks for watching.